With ornithopters, a lot of attention is given to the design of the wings. You might not give as much thought to the drive system. It's just going to be a motor and gearbox, right? Or maybe a couple of servos. But what if we could build an ornithopter that can work like a conventional gearbox, but can also work like a servo, combining some of the advantages of both methods? I had this idea around 1990. Only a few people had built electric ornithopters, and I was thinking ahead to like, what's gonna happen when the motor stops? Can you position the wings for gliding? And I thought, why not take the little circuit board out of a servo and use it to control the motor? If I had built one of these at the time, it would have looked something like this. The motor would run like normal when you want to flap the wings, but then the servo controller would take over when you want to glide. You could also manually flap the wings with the control stick on your transmitter. Notice that the potentiometer is at the wing hinge, not at the crank. That is all you have to do to give it the dual mode operation. Years went by and I never tried to build one of these. Here is what got me thinking about this again. I saw that Servo City is selling a dual mode servo. It can operate like a regular servo, but it also has a continuous rotation mode. So I thought, let's build a dual mode ornithopter. It seemed like an easy way to try this idea that I had been sitting on for so long. At least I would be able to use the servo as is instead of making a new gearbox. In a servo driven ornithopter, you can attach the wings directly to the servos. But to make it dual mode, you have to use a crank mechanism. Unfortunately, that adds a lot of friction and weight. Since the crank has to go through a full 180 degrees, it's going to flap slower than a pure servo driven ornithopter. So it will need a lot of wing area. Also, you can't rely on the wings for steering, so you need a separate steering mechanism in the tail. It's starting to look like a conventional ornithopter, but it will have one big advantage. Like servo-driven ornithopters, you can reduce the amplitude of the wing flapping, and that will make it fly a lot nicer when it's coming in for a landing. That works a lot better than just slowing the wings down. To control the servo, I used a trinket microcontroller from Adafruit. I spliced it into a servo extension wire, really simple. In continuous mode, it just passes the throttle signal through, but in servo mode, it reads the throttle signal from the transmitter and outputs a new signal to flap the wings. Here the ornithopter is flying without the microcontroller installed. It flies pretty good, but without the microcontroller, only the continuous rotation mode is available. The microcontroller has to be installed in order to flap the wings in servo mode. But with the microcontroller on board, performance suffered. The microcontroller is very light, but the ornithopter didn't fly very well in either mode. I considered a lot of ideas for how to boost the performance. I should have just used ball bearings or a lighter wing material. Using a completely different wing design definitely made it worse. I couldn't easily go back to how it was, so I decided to take the risk of running the servo at a higher voltage. Well, now it flies good. Look at that. That's with the three cell battery. And it's flying great with the three cell battery. Look at it climb. All right, try to turn, dude. best flight ever for this model. But I had another problem. Servo City sells a programming card that lets you change what mode the servo is in, but I really wanted to change modes while the ornithopter was flying. I knew the onboard microcontroller should be able to mimic whatever the programming card was doing, but they wouldn't tell me how it works. 
The oscilloscope revealed there was serial communication going back and forth between the programming card and the servo. Eventually, I was able to read the sequence into an Arduino, and I could finally mimic the programming card. But there is an easier way to do this. Remember the original concept from 1990? Moving the potentiometer to the wing hinge confused the servo enough to send it into continuous rotation. Here I used a similar trick. I connected the wiper of the potentiometer to a pin on the microcontroller. By bringing the pin low, I was able to send the servo into continuous rotation. With this trick and a higher voltage battery, the dual mode ornithopter was a success. In slow motion, you can see how the amplitude increases along with the throttle. With decreasing throttle, the ornithopter switches back to servo mode and lands. The Go Build a Servo performed well in the ornithopter and it stood up to a lot of abuse. I think it would work well in a purely servo driven ornithopter too, and it would cost less money than brushless servos. But if I were building another dual mode ornithopter, instead of using a servo as the starting point, any servo is going to be a little hard to build a flapping mechanism onto it that, that turns out bulky and is probably geared down too much. I would consider a different approach. I would use an existing ornithopter that has a conventional gearbox and convert it to work as a dual mode ornithopter. This is the flapping mechanism from a Cybird P2 that I'm converting to dual mode operation. Subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on the next video. I'm going to show you how I built this and we'll see how it flies.